Good morning, flower friends. <laughs> it is early morning here, and I wanted to get out here because it's gonna be another hot day today. We have had incredibly hot days. It's been almost a week since I posted my last video, and a lot of you are reaching out to me asking me if everything's okay. Everything's great. I just had a really busy weekend and lots of stuff going on. My cousin Andre graduated from high school, so we had his graduation party, and then we threw a surprise 80th birthday party for my grandmother um, so that was pretty special and that took a lot of our time and uh, I have some clips of the surprise I'll put later on at the end of this video but a lot of people have been asking about my flocks and my lysianthus so I thought I'd bring you guys inside the deer fence this morning and show you guys around a little bit and talk about how I get long stems for my annual flocks which are in full bloom right now they're amazing but I have some succession plantings of them and I'll show you guys exactly how I pinch my flocks so this is the direct seed area. It looks a little bit different. <laughs> it's completely crazy with weeds. And I don't care because everything is growing up above the weeds as it should. So I'm not worried about the weeds. So we have the Orlea. This is the white that you see is the Orlea. I definitely will be harvesting that this morning before we get really hot. Um, Larkspur is in here. Bupleurum is in here. Bells of Ireland. Cress. I think that's it. So, but everything is up above where uh, the weeds are and it's looking great, guys. Let's take a closer look. The Bells of Ireland. I have about maybe 30 plants that are doing really well and they're starting to form bells as you can see right there. Here's a look at some of the direct seeded Bupleurum. You can see the weeds are just crazy, which as long as my plants are outgrowing the weeds, I don't drive myself crazy. I cannot keep up if I tried to keep this all weeded. So, and you know, next year maybe trying some black plastic on the ground to kind of kill all the weeds before I go ahead and direct sow. That's probably a good idea. I'd also like to look into maybe some no-till areas here next year, especially for some direct seeded stuff. Here's a look at the cress that I direct seeded out here. Um, it's looking fantastic. I'm excited about it and I've been cutting it and using it in bouquets. And equally vibrant is the larkspur. I only had two varieties of larkspur that I direct sowed come up. Some of the seed was a little old, so I'm guessing that's what happened. But yeah, the larkspur is looking great. There's a lot of it down here, a lot of it kind of really coming up you can it's hard to there the camera is focusing on it there's a lot of larkspur very excited perhaps the most successful crop that i'm harvesting from right now is the orlea i've got two sections of it there's this section that you're seeing right here there's one beyond it a little bit but you could also see there's a there's a row of larkspur I, I see if I can get the camera to focus on it. There's a row of larkspur behind the Orlea that's kind of getting crowded out, but that's okay. Anyway, I'm gonna cut this Orlea this morning because sometimes it takes a day or two to rehydrate. It'll get floppy in the vase, but then rehydrate. So I'm gonna be cutting this this morning and go ahead and, and you know hydrating it for the next couple of days before my CSAs this weekend. I just harvested like a crazy amount and it doesn't even look like I touched it. So I like to harvest above a nodule. See that? There was another one right below it. So for Orlea, I harvest when the tops are about two thirds of the way open. And then anything like that, I usually will just snip off because um, it's not gonna hold up well in the vase. This might even droop. I will uh, let it hydrate and see. I ended up not growing dill this year because I wanted to do this Orlea so much and I love it so much because I have an allergic reaction. When I harvest dill, I get blisters all over me. So this is kind of like my dill. <laughs> Here's a marvelous look at my sweet peas that are doing fantastic. Uh, they apparently are all the old times variety. I thought I had planted more of the elegance mix, but I don't, they're not blooming yet if they're in here. Uh, apparently the tray that I planted here was old times. I thought it was elegance mix, but that's ha that happens. Anyway, I love them and they are very sweet. When you walk into the deer fence, it's like, it hits you in the face. This is what you smell. It just, it, it's crazy how far the aroma travels. It's amazing. I will be using these in bouquets this weekend. Green beans, anyone? 
this is my green bean forest. I am so excited about these. I have been so late in getting my vegetables into the ground, but uh, these are 53 day crop, so I will have plenty of time to harvest and to can some beans. And here is a familiar look. I showed you guys this same angle probably about a month ago. Uh, the gladiolas, the first few successions are here in the front, followed by the phlox, the rubecchia, the snapdragons, and then the asters and the ageratum. So I'll show you guys how each thing is coming along. Here's some of my stock. I think it's starting to rain. Uh-oh, uh-oh, starting to rain. Oh no. Did someone say snapdragons? No. Oh. Yeah, these are uh, amazing. And I have a bunch of these harvested and they're in my refrigerator right now, ready for the bouquets this weekend. No, I do not net my, my snapdragons. I did not net them last year. I didn't have any issues. I haven't had any issues so far this year. I'm not saying that it's the right thing to do, but this is just what I do. This is the other side of the deer fence. We're gonna be hopping back and forth, but I wanted to show you guys the Lysianthus. So I'll zoom in here. Um, here is some of my Lysianthus. It's starting to bud up. I would say it's between four and seven or eight inches tall. I, if you kind of separate the leaves, you can see little tiny baby buds in there. Um, it's still raining, so. <laughs> Anyway, we've got uh, a bunch of different varieties here. My labels kind of fell off. Um, we had a couple of heavy downpours and my little plastic labels that I had in here were kind of unearthed. There are a couple pieces of weeds coming up through the holes, the Bio 360, but for the most part, this is a weed free section. Like that's the point of the 360. If I don't put the 360 up, the weeds are gonna grow up just like they're growing on the sides. I mean, there's grass, there's milkweed, there's you know mustard grass, everything. There's just, the weeds will take over unless I put the 360 down. Here is my Cosmos patch. Ooh, the wind's starting to pick up. We've got some apricot lemonade Cosmos in the front here. And then in the back, we have like a uh, the dark double click cranberry, I believe it is. I'll get close ups of the blooms. This is the apricot lemonade. This is uh, a seed packet that I got from Baker Creek. This one is the double click cranberry. This was a seed packet from Johnny's. Beautiful. This section right here is something called Copper Plume. I've never grown it before, but it actually has these, I don't know, they're a really cool um, seed head. So the foliage on this is actually edible. Uh, I don't plan on eating it, but it is super gorgeous. Now, these are really great fresh, but also fantastic dried. Now, most of my plants are this purple color. I have one plant though that its foliage is a green and it's it's just as beautiful. Behind here's the atriplex, the copper plume atriplex. Behind that I have my first succession of basil, which is about ready, and then that's all dianthus back there. Um, it's kind of moving slow. Okay, so this brings me to, this is the second succession planting of my flocks. We'll head over to the first one in a second, but I wanted to show you the height at which I start pinching and it's super, <laughs> super short. So. Uh, this is a weed. Don't don't mind the weed. Anyway, I'm gonna just pinch off the tops. Oh, they smell so good. That's gorgeous. That's gorgeous. But the blooms. I should have pinched these uh, several days, if not a week ago. But I'm just gonna go through and pinch uh, right now. So I would find a spot and I'd go deep. I'm going deep. I'm pinching off one, two, three three sets of leaves there, gone, because I want it to branch out from the bottom. And this is just the, it's the idea with pinching anything. You want it to start branching out from the bottom. And the more that it branches out, the longer the stems start to be. So this I pinched already a long time ago. This has been pinched. So it's got longer stems coming up from the bottom. This is gonna be pinched off right there. Pinch, pinch. Hiya, yeah. 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 You just keep pinching until the stems are the length that you want. And now I have a bunch of usable bouquet length stems and it's because I've been pinching these Oh, probably once a week. I'm not even kidding you. I would just come out here and I'd see buds start to form. I'd be like, nope, not today, flocks, and just clip their heads off. 
It was painful for me at first, but now that I see what the end result of pinching is for flocks, you gotta do it. You Excuse me, <laughs> smells really good. Every time I harvest, I feel like it doesn't even look like I harvested. You can just keep going for days. And now I am cutting above a leaf node so that more can grow, so that they'll continue to produce. I have three successions. This is my first small patch I just pinched for you over there. That was my second succession. And then I have a third succession way down in the, uh, the 14 rows that I just put in uh, a couple weeks ago. I love this pale, pink oh wow that's gonna just come on my counter with me oh they smell so good now some of these are a little bit too open you kind of want to harvest the bunch with there are some that are open some that are opening and some that are still closed um, it just adds that interest to your bouquets they also smell really good guys they really really smell delicious so what I was growing here this front section is blushing bride and then I have a mix which is including some twinkle. Let me put up a picture my mom sent me. She's growing some twinkle variety. They're so cool. I'm gonna actually order some specifically next year um, because I love, there's some in my mix, but I love the uh, texture that it brings. Also, then I have um, cherry caramel at the end. So yeah, it's a really good variety and they just add color, aroma, and just interest in a bouquet. I love them. Oh, and I wanted to mention that I planted these outside on April 28th in this Bio 360, this on the left, and this picture was taken exactly two months later, June 28th, and they were outside uncovered and they sustained a low of 23 degrees and uh, did not suffer any damage from being out there. So they're definitely cold hardy. Now, April 28th is about four weeks before my last frost date. So I got them out there a month before my last frost and we're about a month after my last frost and they're ready to harvest. So I am going to continue to cut off this, <laughs> but let's show you my Rebecca first. And uh, cause that's, I think the last thing in here that I didn't show you other than, you know, I've got other things in here, but nothing of interest. The lilies, I am starting to cut the lilies. They are coloring up uh, my fever pews over here. And then there's just sunflowers in the back, uh, which no big deal. They're just sunflowers. So they're just sunflowers. Who says that? But they're just rows of sunflowers. It's not interesting. Rebecca, oh God. It's back. Japanese beetles. First one that I'm seeing. No. Okay, I'm gonna step on it, excuse me. Mm. Here, friends, is Rubecchia Ro. I have several different varieties. I've got Chim Chimney, I've got Sahara, I have Rustic, which is in the way back. That entire patch is blooming already. It looks amazing. I have other varieties too. What the heck else did I grow? This first section right here is still growing, still putting on buds, looking real good. And then I have two sections that are blooming. Wee -dee 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 -dee. Ah, hello. This is, it looks to be, just a regular Rubecchia. Now I had labels on here and they seem to have, uh, they're missing. All my labels have gone missing, guys. I need a better labeling system. I'm totally harvesting this and wow, some good stem length. I'm cutting it above a nodule. I could cut it deeper, but this um, stem is there. So that's a decent, that's decent. I like it. This one over here is shorter. Cutting it deep though, as deep as I can. I could probably get away with using that in some bouquets this weekend. Um, these are awfully open and more susceptible to bug damage when you cut them open. I prefer to cut them a little bit more closed. But yeah, like this already has a bite on its petal. I'm still cutting it because cutting it encourages more production. I'm actually gonna cut it super deep to encourage um, longer stems. So I'm cutting it that deep and I'm sacrificing these three that's what I would normally do to get the stem height. Like this, I didn't need to. That was just amazing. I, I do believe this is Sahara because I had Chim Chimney Sahara and I do have some Sahara like stems over here that I'm going to cut right here that have the, the darker petals. This entire patch is the rustic Rubecchia and it's exactly that. It's got like an old rustic look to it. 
Um, oh, wow, that just kind of pinched itself, or broke itself. Wow, that's some nice stem length right there. Wow, these have some really great stem length right here. So I'm just gonna cut a few of them, put them in the vase, see how they open up, see if they like being cut at this stage, uh, make sure they're still gonna open up, put them in a vase. Ooh. And these just have, I mean, there are, I'm looking, there are over a hundred buds here. They're just, they get so productive. Okay, so I am gonna take these and put them in the fridge. <laughs> I do have a, a ton of snapdragons in there and uh, I am gonna be saving these for bouquets for this weekend. I've got a bunch of customers waiting on flowers. So I'm excited to finally start being able to harvest bucketfuls of stuff. I already brought the Orlea to the porch, but um, yeah, I'm excited guys. I've got a lot of stuff happening. It's good. Anyway, I wanted to bring you guys a quick update. I've got some other things going on this week. I hope to share with you guys as well. So thanks for sticking around. We'll see you soon. Oh, oh, here's a little clip from my grandmother's surprise. It was, uh, it was special. So happy 80th birthday, Grandma. I love you. Oh my God, I'm telling you, it's too much. I actually forgot, on the other side of the Snapdragons, I have asters, which are starting to bud up. Let me zoom in on that one. So here's one that is starting to bud up. This is the Valkyrie mix. And then right beyond that I, is where the uh, Adjurbatum starts. And that Adjurbatum right there, if the camera will focus there, that Adjurbatum right there, this is also a mix. I think it's the Timeless Adjurbatum mix. That one, as you can see, is burgundy, but I've got some purple ones, I've got some white ones. Um, they're kind of all in that purpley pink family. So I've pinched these as well, and they're starting to put some height on. And uh, let's see if I can find a purple one. There is a purple one, and do you see what that is right underneath it? That, my friends, is a tarnished plant bug. And if you are having some blooms that are looking a little weird, they are probably to blame, and they are awful this year. I have got to get my um, bug stuff off, but it won't stop raining. The bug spray is only good if it doesn't rain. It washes away and you have to reapply after rain. <clears throat> That's not a good angle. Let me find a better angle. It's not a weed. That's actually phlox. That's actually phlox. What am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> Pinch. Every time I harvest, oh, there's a thistle. Ugh, I hate thistles. They have um, spikes. Anyway, I wanted to bring you guys, what the heck is that? What's that? I don't even know what this stuff is. 